Okay, so let's see if you could figure out how to solve this interesting math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Ted can dig a hole in 30 minutes. Ed can do it in 40 minutes. How long will it take if they work together? All right, so it seems like a pretty straightforward problem, but uh, actually uh, this particular problem is quite interesting. So be careful when you select your answer. But we do have a multiple choice uh, question here. So our first choice is A, 15.3 minutes, B, 17.1 minutes, C, 29.6 minutes, or D, 35 minutes. All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I will fully explain how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go take uh, one more look at this problem. It seems pretty simple, but actually, it's a little bit more involved than you think. So uh, the problem is Ted can dig a hole in 30 minutes. Ed can uh, dig the same hole in 40 minutes. So how long will it take if they work together? All right, so let's go to take a look at the answer. The correct answer is B, 17.1 minutes. Now, some of you might have uh, been thinking, you know what, now I'm just going to go ahead and average these 30 and 40 minutes. Maybe uh, if I average these together, uh, of course, the average of those two numbers is 35 minutes. So this is probably the very uh, uh, likely wrong answer that a lot of people <laughs> would have selected. They're like, all right, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, maybe I average these together. But does this make sense? Uh, think about it. So if Ted can dig the hole all by himself in 30 minutes, and then he has a whole other person to help him out, you think they're only going to save uh, five minutes, or actually it's going to take him longer than whether he can do by himself. So the average here doesn't make sense. So hopefully, if you took a guess here, you know, you were thinking in terms of these two numbers or maybe even this number. So again, that's why I said be careful, but uh, this particular problem is quite interesting. And if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus and a 100% and a certificate of excellence because uh, it seems to me that you definitely know how to solve an algebra work problem. So what we're talking about here is work and there's actually a formula or a basic uh, kind of equation that we need to understand about work problems. This is a very typical and common type of math problem that you will have to uh, face, especially if you're an algebra student. But uh, let's get into this problem right now. All right, so the first thing is you always want to use the rule of three. Always read a problem at least three times before you uh, get to work on it. But uh, this problem hopefully is pretty straightforward. Uh, the question is, hey, if uh, Ted and Ed work together, how long will it take them to, uh, you know, dig this hole? So they should save quite a bit of time, right? So if you're thinking, well, if Ted can do it in 30 minutes, maybe if Ed helps him out, maybe we'll just cut this in half. So like maybe like 15 minutes. So even A would be a good logical choice. But uh, some of you might be saying, well, if I cut 40 minutes in half, that's 20 minutes. So uh, maybe like B. So if you uh, got the answer right by just guessing using common sense, that is excellent, okay? Because if you uh, still have to take math exams and tests, the objective is to get the right answer, right? But hopefully you want to understand the concepts because if this was not a multiple choice question and you just had to kind of, you know, figure out uh, the answer on uh, your own, well, you have to understand something about the concept of work when it comes to uh, algebra and mathematics. So let's go ahead and talk about this right now. And this is what you need to know. All right, so what we're dealing with here is what we call an algebra work problem. All right, so when you are faced with algebra work problems, this is the formula that you need to keep in mind. Now, what is a work problem? Well, uh, obviously, uh, this particular situation is a work problem. You have two people here, you know, digging a hole. That's not so fun, but uh, here is another type of work situation. So you could have like one machine. Let's say we had 
some machine here that can do the job in 30 minutes. Maybe it's producing widgets or whatever the case is. And another machine can do it in 40 minutes. So it doesn't have to be a person, but it's about the concept of working or producing something. So like manufacturing problems or work problems, anything that uh, has to deal with, you know, two or more. It doesn't matter of fact, uh, this particular formula that I'm going to show you can be related to three people, okay, or more. So it could be like Ted, Ed, and Bill, or digging a hole, and you can have various times. So anyways, uh, the only way you're going to really get a sense of a work problem is to practice a lot of different type of algebra word problems, okay, which work problems are kind of a standard type. And uh, not to go off on too many tangents here, but when you are solving uh, word problems, especially algebra word problems, you need to know the basic type of problems, which would include work problems. Then there's motion problems like rate times time equals distance. There's mixture problems. These are the kind of the standard uh, boilerplate problems that you need to understand how to solve. So let's get into these work problems right now. All right, so this is the formula, and that is this. Uh, the time that you can, um, these machines or people can, the time it will take to do that, do the job together, All right? So I'm kind of stumbling and bumbling here trying to describe this formula. So the time it will take to do them, to do the job together is going to be equal to one over how much time it takes one person to do the job plus uh, how much time it takes the other person to do the job. And of course, if there's three people, we can just continue on like this. All right. So might be saying, this is kind of confusing, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, not too confusing, hopefully. So what you want to be thinking about is we have Ted and Ed. So this would be, for example, how long it would take Ted to do the job. We'll put this in in minutes. And then right here, this would be how long it will take uh, Ed to do the job. Now, uh, we don't know how long it's going to take them uh, to do this job together. Obviously, that's what we're looking to solve for. So we're going to have the variable x here that we want to solve for. So we're going to end up with 1 over x is equal to 1 over Ted's time plus 1 over Ed's time. All right, so if you understand this, then basically we can just build a lovely equation here. All right, so Ted can dig this hole in 30 minutes, and Ed can do it in 40 minutes. How long will it take them to do this together? All right, so here, uh, here again, we have Ted is equal to 30 minutes. Ed is equal to 40 minutes in terms of um, how much time it takes them to do this work. So let's let X equal the time it will take them working together. All right, so again, we're going to go back here and reference this equation. So that time, it takes them working together. We don't know that, so we're going to let that uh, be the variable X. Matter of fact, I'll just kind of do it right here. So this would be 1 over X, and then we're going to plug in uh, Ted's and Ed's time respectively. So we're going to end up with something like this. All right, so 1 over 30, this is the time it takes uh, Ted to do the job, plus 1 over 40, this is the time it takes Ed to do the job, uh, is going to be equal to 1 over X. This is the amount of time it's going to take them working together. All right, so this is how the setup goes for a typical type of algebra work problem. All right, so at this point, it really comes down to your ability to solve this lovely equation. All right, so let's go ahead and take a uh, step forward to get going on this equation. But before we do this, I need you to do this, and that is to locate the subscribe button and uh, just click it. You don't have to smash it. Some YouTube uh, folks out there are saying, hey, smash that subscribe button. I don't want you to smash anything on your computer or whatnot. But, uh, you know, just make sure you actually hit this thing. And if you're going to subscribe, hit that notification bell as well. Now, why would I stop this uh, video to ask for your help? Well, I need your assistance because I have a goal. And hopefully you have goals as well. And uh, if your goal is to learn mathematics, that is fantastic. And you should have high goals because the worst thing that I've seen uh, teaching math for decades is that there's so many people that struggle in math. And unfortunately, they don't realize that they themselves are really kind of standing in their own way. Now, what am I talking about here? Well, the number one thing that prevents people from learning math is their mindset, okay? Because they got these thoughts, I'm not smart enough, uh, math is not my thing, I'm not able to understand this, you know, I'm just like, you know, math is just so complicated. Listen, if you need to learn math, okay, I'm telling you right now, you need to change your mindset. 
you can absolutely be successful in math. And that's what my channel is about, is to get this message across to people because typically people are just trying to learn math a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, and they get frustrated and just kind of reinforces their mindset. Okay, so this channel is all about, you know, uh, really encouraging people to overcome any math anxieties, be successful in math, but it takes time, effort, and work. Uh, but, you know, I have to be a truth teller here. By the way, too, if you need additional help, Beyond this video in algebra, algebra word problems, um, I have a ton of word problems on my YouTube channel. But to check out my full main math courses, my Algebra 1, uh, Algebra 2 courses, you'll see those links in the description of this video. Because before you can solve an algebra word problem, you have to have the actual algebra skills. All right, so make sure you get that help. And uh, I will be available to help you because I am posting videos all the time. Now, let's get into the rest of this problem here because now... It really uh, depends on your ability to solve this equation. All right, now, uh, this is not necessary to uh, know uh, or describe this type of equation in algebra, but if you know what type of equation this is, put that into the comment section. Now, this is not a quadratic equation. This is not an exponential equation. It is kind of important to know the correct uh, description of uh, what type of equation you're looking for because let's suppose you're like, I am a student to math man. I don't know how to solve this type of uh, equation. Well, you need to kind of look it up, right? What type of equation are you going to look up how to solve? Uh, logarithmic equation? No. Exponential equation? No. This happens to be what we call a rational equation. Okay, so a rational equation, a rational expression is one where there's fractions involved. All right, so I don't want to overwhelm you here. Uh, but uh, there's a couple different approaches we could take to solve this equation. And anytime you have fractions in an equation, the easiest thing to do is to uh, figure out what the LCD is of all the denominators and just multiply the entire equation by the LCD. Uh, you'll be able to clear the fractions. All right, so what's the lowest common denominator between 30, 40, and X? Well, uh, really, we don't need um, uh, x here involved. What we do need is the LCD between these two numbers just to clear these fractions. So the LCD is 120. Okay, so that is the lowest common denominator of, between these two numbers. And uh, again, we just want to clear away these numeric fractions. And when we do that, when we multiply the entire equation by the lowest common denominator, which, of course, is 120, and if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even understand why uh, the LCD is 120. Well, I appreciate your um, you know, integrity here because if you don't understand basic things, never feel bad. Like, I don't even know fractions and I'm in algebra. Well, just do a review because a lot of people are in that same boat. So if you need a, a review for basic math, check out my Math Foundations or my Math Skills Rebuilder course. You'll find links to those in the description. But let's go ahead and clear um, the fractions here at least the numeric fractions, by multiplying by 120. All right, so here is how that's going to look. So 120 times the entire equation is going to be 120 times 1 over 30. So 30 goes into 120. Now, of course, we're multiplying fractions, so this is 120 over 1. So it's 120 times 1 over 30, so 30 goes into 120, 4. All right, so then it's 120 times 1 over 40, so 120 or 120 over 1 times 1 over 40. 40 goes into 123. So we have 4 plus 3, and then 120 times 1 over x. So uh, this will be 120 over x. All right, so hopefully you're like, yes, indeed, I see, Mr. YouTube Math Man, where this is going, because now uh, over here, instead of all these fractions, I got 4 plus 3. All right, so what's 4 plus 3? Well, 4 plus 3, the last time I checked, is 7. So now we have 7 is equal to 120 over x. All right, now what do we do at this point? Well, what we have here is a basic, uh, you know, algebraic equation, but really you can kind of think of this as a proportion. And anytime you have one fraction equaling to one number or another fraction, uh, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is not a fraction. Well, if I put it over 1, now you could think of it as a fraction where you have a numerator and denominator, right? Because when you have one fraction equaling to one fraction, you have what we call a proportion. And when you have a proportion in uh, algebra or mathematics, you could simply just use the cross product. In other words, you could just cross multiply to clear these fractions. So 7 times x is 7x. 1 times 120 is 120. And now we're down to 7x is equal to 120. And to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 7. 
All right, so 120 divided by 7 is approximately 17.1 minutes. And uh, let's take a look at our answer from a common sense standpoint, right? You're like, yeah, you know what? I think that answer makes sense. Because uh, imagine if you got an answer, and this happens all the time to a lot of students, and it's like 49 minutes, okay? Or maybe like X is equal to five minutes. And you got to think about the question, right? So Ted could do the job in 30 minutes. Ed can do it in 40 minutes. So just kind of logically think, well, maybe this is going to be around, you know, somewhere between 15 to 20 minutes in terms of them working together. So if you get some sort of oddball answer, like five minutes or like, you know, more time, uh, that's an indication that, hey, you know what, you probably made a mistake and you need to go back and correct it. So always kind of um, use some common sense and reality check your final answers. All right, so hopefully this was an interesting little video. That is the whole goal, uh, you know, behind my channel. And hopefully, you know, you actually learn something. But you're not going to get better at uh, solving math word problems unless you do two things. The first thing is you got to get the skills down, okay? So don't try to take on a problem before you understand how to solve equations. So work on your skills. And then what you need to do is practice, 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 right? So there's no substitute for practicing. That's the only way you're going to get better. And hopefully this little uh, video helps you out along those ways. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.